With the entire job application process happening online these days, one of the most important skills that you need is the skill when it comes to writing an application email. What are my tips to make it more effective? That's what we're going to talk about today. Hi there. Thank you for checking out my channel. Thank you for clicking on this video. If this is the first video you're watching from my channel, I make educational and motivational content. So if you don't want to miss any of my new uploads, don't forget to hit subscribe and hit that bell icon. Now, like I said in the intro, Kanina, it's all about writing an application email. So if you want to learn that, stick around. But uh, just a quick little plug, if you want to help support this channel or cause to democratize education in the Philippines, one way to do that is through buying our merch, so shop.teamlika.com. That's where you can get the shirts, hoodies, mugs, caps I designed for this team. So everyone na bumili na, maraming salamat. Sa bibili pa lang, maraming salamat din. Sa mga hindi pa nakakabili, that's perfectly fine. This is all of us, the entire team, all of you pitching in to ensure that we keep the lights on and we can buy the equipment that we need pay our staff, and of course, keep making free content for everyone. So, maraming salamat sa inyo. And now that we have that out of the way, let's jump into our discussion for today. All right, so let's talk about how to write an effective application email. Now, we talked about writing a resume a few episodes ago with Pat Soya of Job Defined. So, if you haven't listened to that podcast yet, go and check that out. And uh, isisigit ko na rin dito, if you want to learn more about that, a new career and job podcast na meron tayo under the Podcast Network Asia is Job Defined, hosted by Pat Soya, uh, a headhunter and an HR practitioner. And if you want to learn more from him, go and check out Job Defined on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and anywhere you get your podcast. Okay? Now, dive na tayo into our discussion on the application email. I have a few tips for you na hopefully makatulong para maging mas effective yung email ninyo. I have three tips. And we're going to start with the first one right away. The first tip is this. You have to check for typos. Now, a few weeks back, and I'm going to... Hold dun sa mga name ng mga tao na to, no? Pero a few weeks back, I posted an ad. Uh, kasi we're looking to expand the team. We're looking for content interns, social media interns, and an executive assistant for Team Laika or for, or for Learn Without Walls, which is my company. And uh, one of the things that we encountered was this person who said that nagpadala daw siya ng email pero hindi daw namin nakuha or nagbabounce daw or hindi daw nagsasend. And uh, upon further investigation, we discovered that the reason why hindi dumarating yung email niya is because ang spelling niya ng Team Laika is T-A-M-L-Y-C-A. Uh, which, again, is not correct kasi dun sa mismong ad for the jo- job, dun sa mismong YouTube channel, sa Facebook uh, Facebook pages ko, ang kitang-kita naman, ang spelling ng Laika, which is my name, is L-Y-Q-A. So, again, the problem kung bakit hindi, hindi uh, nakakarating yung application niya is because na-misspell niya yung email address mismo. So, I really want you to check for typos, especially dun sa email address na pagpapadala ninyo. Especially dun sa name nung person na papadalan ninyo ng application. Kasi, uh, I don't know if it's just me, no? And actually, I'm sure na it's not just me. But if you misspell the name of the person na pinapadalan ninyo ng email, if you misspell the name of your boss, a lot of people take offense dun. Kasi, uh, funny pa kasi dun sa position ng executive assistant, one of our standards is dapat may attention to detail. Kasi yun ang work ng executive assistant, right? You have to be very good at the spotting information, uh, proofreading things. So sa akin, di ba, um, yun na yung unang audition ninyo eh. Your application email is your first audition pagdating sa position. So if dun pa lang sa pangalan ko na misspell niya na, hindi siya nag-take, nag-make ng effort to correct it, and instead of looking at things, double-checking, ang una niyang ginawa is to message uh, message me to say na, oh, may problema kasi hindi nakakarating yung email ko. And only for me to find out na it was uh, that person who was making the mistake. Like, yun palang parang, di ba, ibig sabihin, alam na alam mo na na parang okay. Parang hindi siya pasado sa audition. Kasi nga, again, wala siyang attention to the detail. So, kung, kung kinorect niya ba, um, 
sa sarili niya at hindi niya na tinanong sa akin, baka nakalusot pa siya. Pero the fact na ganito pala yung ugali niya, di ba? Yung parang, if merong something wrong, instead of finding kung saan siya nagkamali, itatanong niya kung saan siya nagkamali or ibibintang niya sa iba na, oh, mali, ganyan-ganyan, bakit ganito? Nagtatanong siya in, instead of looking for the answer himself or herself, sabi ko parang, okay, this is already a clue na parang hindi kami good fit. Kasi I am willing to train and teach my people and alam ng lahat ng staff ko yan. But if yung pinaka-core principle ng Team Laika, which is hanap bago hingi, is not evident in the person, then obviously hindi masyadong good fit. So again, number one, when it comes to your application email, make sure that you check for typos. Lalo na sa email address kasi kung hindi, hindi darating yung email mo. And number two, sa mga pangalan. Sa mga pangalan, sa pangalan ng company. Like if you're, for example, applying for, for a job sa Pfizer and you don't even know how to spell Pfizer, di ba? Paano na yun? So you really have to do your research. Check for typos. It works for the address, works for the entire email, pati dun sa text sa loob. Okay? Now, the next tip, tip number two is this. Please use the subject line. Okay? And, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not going to name any names, but this is an entire new experience for me. Uh, and my team dun sa pagtingin ng mga application ng maraming tao. And again, I'm so grateful kasi so many people flooded the email wanting to work with us. But one of the things I noticed is that some people don't use the subject line. So kung hindi niya alam yung subject line, di ba, dun sa, sa email construction, under dun sa, dun sa email address that you're going to send the email to, usually you'll find yung subject line. Now, how do you use the subject line sa isang application email? Ako ang um, encouragement ko sa inyo or ang tip ko sa inyo would be you can use the format that goes like this. You write the job title, tapos applicant, tapos you use a semicolon, and then you add your name. Actually, we would appreciate it as hiring managers if you use your surname first. Okay, so ganito. For example, sa akin, kung mag-apply ako as an executive assistant. So I would write sa subject line ko, executive assistant, Applicant or Executive Assistant Application, colon, okay, and then my name. So, Maravilla, comma, Laika, for example. So, again, that could be the format that you follow para pag binuksan ng HR practitioner or HR director, hiring manager yung email, alam agad kung anong posisyon ang, ang pinapasukan mo at alam kung sino ka. So, pag hinanap namin kayo uli, di ba, sa isang buong dagat ng mga people who are applying for for an executive assist- assistant position, madali namin kayong mahahanap kasi nandun agad yung name ninyo. And again, it shows that you are the type of person who makes an effort. ba? Yung iba kasi walang subject line. Tapos, ang masakit pa doon, wala ring description. Nakalagay lang si attached or naka-attach lang yung file. So again, think about it. You have to use the subject line. Okay? Now, the third tip is this. Please use complete sentences. Okay, complete sentences. I know it's just an email, but an email is still mail. ba? Kaya naman email, electronic mail. So, ibig sabihin nun, yung formatting natin sa letter, susunod pa rin natin, we still use complete sentences. So, uh, I, again, no, I've had people send in applications with just hi, H-I, wala pang period. ba? Minsan, hindi pa nakakapital yung first letter na H. So, H-I lang. Minsan, wala pang, wala pang text. Diba? Tapos naka-attach lang yung resume nila. Wala pang subject line. So again, if if you are really weeding yung mga applicants who are serious about the job or serious about the application or who are real professionals, then syempre matatanggal na yung yung email mo sa running. Sayang naman, diba? Sayang naman kung talagang maganda yung opportunity for you or if talagang magandang fit ka rin naman. Pag-usapan na natin, ano na ngayon yung laman ng text? Okay, so we already talked about two tips. Number one, you have to check for typos. Number two, you have to use the subject line. Number three, use complete sentences. Now, ano yung lalagay natin sa complete sentences na yun? So, of course, you start with your greeting, di ba? Hi, thus you can use the first name if this is an, an international company. Quick tip din yon. So, a lot of people uh, don't know that. Uh, na kapag nasa international company, they usually just use the first name or Mr. and then last name. Miss and then last name. Uh, but actually, recently, lalo na kong BPO company yan, just use the first name. 
Uh, medyo matagal makasanayan yan. Uh, kasi sanay tayo, di ba, sa Pilipinas, lahat ma'am, lahat sir. Minsan ma'am sir pa. <laughs> di ba? Pero um, when you're writing, mas maganda if you just use the first name, use a period, and then you go into the three eyes. Now, ano yung three eyes ng text sa isang application email? Number one, you have to show interest. Okay? So, you can say that you're interested in applying for the position na ganyan-ganyan. Okay? You're interested to work with the company. And I have so many great examples. Kung sino yung maha-hire namin sa team like as executive assistant, hihingi ako ng permiso na ipakita sa inyo kung ano yung email nila and what made us want to get them for the position. Now, again, show you're interested dun sa position na yon and you're interested to join the company. Number two thing that you have to include is an introduction. So you have to introduce yourself. So, hi, I'm Laika. I am a, profe- I am a registered psychometrician. Let's just say something about yourself. Uh, and I have a lot of experience when it comes to social media management, which I think would be a good contribution to your team. So, yon. Again, that is just a one-liner introduction. Okay na yon. And then your third I that you have to include is instruction. Not any instruction. It's kind of a call to action. So make sure, ito, a lot of people don't know this, no? pero make sure that at the end of your, your introductory email, write that uh, for any concerns or if you want to reach out to me, here is my mobile number. Here is my email address. Uh, kung meron kang ibang mga ways for your, them to reach you, include that sa dulo. Okay? And for any updates, I would appreciate it if you update me uh, sa process ng resume or whatever, sa process ng application. And then include your contact details. Now, a lot of people, again, don't do that anymore. Uh, if you have a signature line in your email, you may not, not need to do that. Pero mas maganda pa rin kung meron. Okay? So again, have that call to action sa dulo. Now, bakit ganun? Kasi may incentivize yung tao na nagbabasa ng email ninyo, nabalikan ka. Kasi sa totoo lang, yung iba hindi na talaga mag, hindi na talaga sasagutin. Parang, okay, to bin na lang. Or sinestar lang yung mga application na medyo maganda, tapos the rest bahala na. But if you include yung details ninyo, hindi na niya kailangan buksan pa yung resume mo, i-download pa yan, para lang makita niya yon. Okay? So, yun yung again, number three tip, use complete sentences, express your interest, introduce yourself, and provide instruction on how they can contact you after. Okay? So, yung three eyes. Now, tip number four tayo. Okay? Make sure that you include your attachments. Okay? Let's talk about the attachments. Ano ba ilalagay doon? Of course, a cover letter is going to be helpful if you want to have a little bit of extra. Now, if you don't know, know how to write your cover letter, we have a video on the YouTube uh, channel sa Team Laika, how to write an effective cover letter. You can find that on YouTube right now. So again, you can include a cover letter. You can, Of course, you need to include your resume or your CV if you have it. Okay? So make sure that you include it. Kasi yung iba, nakakalimutan. Di ba? Ang ganda na ng introduction, tapos hindi naman na-attach yung file. So make sure that you attach it. I-double check ninyo bago nyo hit yung send. Okay? Now, let's talk a little bit more about the attachments. And again, this is based on my own experience then, uh, looking through a lot of applications in the past few days. People sometimes send in their resumes or their CV na naka-zip file. Please do not do that. Okay? Ulitin ko yan, ha? Wag po zip file. Kasi bakit? A lot of viruses um, ay naka-zip file. Okay? Minsan downloadable pa. Minsan... Uh, Minsan hindi siya madaling i-open. So, um, I will not, for example, ako ha, hiring manager, I will not spend a lot of time to download pa a third-party application just for me to be able to access your resume. So, please do not send a zip file. Okay? There are ways naman to compress the file. Don't send a zip file. Next tip, don't send a Word file. Nasabi ko na rin ito dun sa how to write a resume in a video sa YouTube. And again, for more details about that, you can go and check out the Get Hired playlist on YouTube. Pero please do not send a Word file. Bakit? Kasi kapag nag-Word file kayo, tapos yung font na pinili ninyo, wala dun sa computer ng company or ng HR, ang mangyayari would be ma- magugulo yung format ng inyong resume. And you don't want to do that. Okay? So please do not send a Word file. Wag doc. Wag dot doc or dot doc x. Now, anong format dapat? Kung hindi pwedeng zip, hindi pwedeng word file, what should I send? Mas maganda if PDF. Okay? So you have to export it as a PDF. Now, for those of you who don't know how to do that, uh, you can just 
look at yung save options. ba diba? Save as or kung nakama kayo, export as dun sa inyong doc, uh, document na program, save it as a .pdf file. Now, bakit PDF dapat? Kasi kapag PDF file, hindi na siya gagalaw. So, whether um, may font na nandoon sa device ng inyong hiring manager or, or wala, it doesn't matter. Kasi kung ano yung itsura dun sa, dun sa device ninyo, nung inyong resume, yun yung magiging itsura kapag sinend nyo siya. And ang maganda pa sa PDF file, na open siya sa browser. So, again, hindi ko na kailangan mag-download pa ng program to open it. I-click ko lang yun, tas, yun, lalabas na siya. Now, here's another piece of detail that I really want you to remember. Make sure, and this is bonus, no? Icing to on top. Make sure that you save the file, okay, under a file name na pinersonalize ninyo. We've had a great uh, applicant na ang kanyang resume ay, ang nakalagay was Canva application. So, again, I'm not, I'm not endorsing Canva or anything, no? Pero, yun yung file name nung kanyang resume. Now, ang struggle doon would be, kapag sinave ko yon as the hiring manager, irerename ko pa siya doon sa pangalan niya kasi wala yung pangalan niya doon sa mismong file. So, pag napunta siya sa downloads folder ko, hahanapin ko pa doon, irerename ko pa, it's extra work for me. So, kung nagmamadali ako, di ba? and again, this adds a level of professionalism sa inyong application email, mas maganda ko ilagay nyo yung last name ninyo. So, for example, ako mag apply ang ilalagay ko would be Maravilla Laika. So, Maravilla dash, Maravilla dash, Laika dash, resume. Okay? Kung gusto nyo dagdagan ng extra pang level, Maravilla dash, Laika dash, EA applicant. Okay? Now, bakit? Kasi alam mo na na kapag sinave ko tong file na to, ang lalabas na document name ay yung last name ng applicant agad. Hindi ko na kailangan i-rename. And the HR manager, the hiring director, the boss will appreciate that. Okay? So again, make sure that you include your attachment. And when you, when you do, make sure that you rename the file na hindi siya naka-zip, hindi siya naka-doc, hindi siya, kung pwede hindi rin JPEG, mas maganda PDF. Okay? JPEG, medyo mas okay na siya kaysa sa Word, pero mas maganda pa rin kung PDF. Alright? So again, remember those things. Now, pupunta tayo sa last tip natin. Tip number five, here's what I need you to understand. You have to send it or schedule it sa decent time. Okay? Now, someone told me before na parang, hindi mas, baka ba na mas paganda po kung 3am kasi pag 3am daw nag-send, at least walang kasabay. Well, sa akin, honestly, kasi sa team like, uh, we work around the clock naman. Um, one thing na my staff does is they work kung kailan nila gusto. So wala akong, we don't keep a record of kung kailan sila nag-log in or anything. As long as nagagawa nila yung task nila, I don't control that. So sa amin, hindi masyadong importante yon Kasi hindi masyadong traditional yung company ko. Pero if you're applying for a traditional job position, sa government position, sa admin sa accounting, sa law firm, or anything like that, I encourage you to send your email at a decent, decent time. So, ilagay nyo, pwede nyo naman i-schedule yan. May scheduler naman ng mga email. I-schedule nyo siya na ma-send at 8 a.m. O kaya, 9 a.m. Pero huwag nyo i-schedule ng sobrang late. Kasi what you have to understand is that a lot of companies have their hiring managers na meron silang device na nakaka-receive ng email in case of for work emergency. So, kung ako yung magiging boss mo, ako yung magiging hiring manager sa isang traditional company, tapos nakita ako, nag-e-email ka ng 3 a.m., hindi masyadong maganda yon in two ways. Okay? And remember this. Number one, hindi siya maganda kasi ang dating would be this person doesn't respect people's time. Kasi nga, yung nag-send ka ng email, eh, alam mo namang late na. And then the second and I think more dangerous effect kapag nag email ka ng madaling araw is this. You're kind of telling them that they can do the same to you. Okay, so I, I, I just need to reiterate that, no? Kapag na-email ka ng madaling araw, parang sinasabi mo sa kanila na okay lang na i-email ako ng madaling araw. Like, nasa back and call nyo rin ako at any time of the day. So you're setting a precedent na hindi masyadong maganda. Kasi mamaya, pagpasok mo sa company, tapos ine-establish mo na na, oh, di ba, pag working hours lang po ako available, pag Saturday, hindi ako available, Monday po ako sumasagot, which is tama yun. Yun ang tamang gawin. Eh kaya lang, nung apply ka pa lang, nag email ka na ng madaling araw eh. So ang feeling nila, parang okay na. ba? So again, schedule nyo na lang. Schedule nyo na lang at a decent hour. 
para mas may respeto dun sa tatanggap. Okay? So again, those are our five tips when it comes to writing an effective application email. Lalo na sa panahon ngayon na online na ang lahat. Number one, check for typos. Lalo na sa email address ng HR. Okay? So again po, ang team like is T-A-M-L-Y-Q-A, hindi L-Y-C-A, hindi L-Y-K-A. So again, these little things mean a lot. Number two, make you, make sure that you use the subject line. Ang format natin would be job title application or job title applicant. And then semicolon, your last name, your first name. Okay? Third tip, make sure that you use complete sentences in the body of your email. So express your interest, express your introduction or introduce yourself. And then the third thing would be instruct them. So please, I would appreciate it if you consider my application. For any questions or any updates, you can reach out to me. Tapos lagay niyo yung mobile number ninyo at email address ninyo. Okay? And number four, make sure that you include the attachments. At yung attachment ninyo, make sure that it's effective. It's renamed with your uh, personal information, your last name and your first name. And then number five, make sure that you send it or schedule it to be sent at a, at a decent time. A decent time would be 8 a.m. to say uh, 4 p.m. Huwag naman 5 kasi pag, pag, pag 5, paalis na yung tao, di ba? End of day na yun eh. So mga 3, ganun. Actually, so ganda kong morning kasi ang ibig sabihin nun, morning person ka. <laughs> okay? So again, think about these things when you're drafting your next email and I hope it uh, enables you to have a more effective application email in the process. All right? Now, if you want to learn more things, again, this podcast, the Get Hired podcast is here for you. Don't forget to follow the podcast. We are on Spotify, Apple Podcast, and um, all the major podcasting platforms. So you can prepare well for your next job interview or yung, in your career change or career shift. And also for career advice then, we have new discussions uh, on the Get to Real mini series or Get Real segment. Uh, so we talk about issues, uh, about yung mga trendy topics when it comes to, to making your choice a career. So don't forget to follow the podcast. And if you want to join the conversation, we have the Facebook page. It's called Get Hired by Team Laika on Facebook. So Get Hired by T-A-M-L-Y-Q-A. Importante yung Q. So you can send your questions, ask for advice, or even get encouraged by the stories of other Team Laika members na nakahadap na ng trabaho. And uh, of course, you can uh, just talk to us uh, through that Facebook page para kung personal yung inyong mga questions, pwede natin doon pag-usapan. Alright? Alright, so that's the podcast episode. Again, uh, thank you for watching until the end of the video. Subscribe if you haven't yet. Hit that bell icon. Follow the Get Hired podcast then to catch these as soon as they are put up. Ang ating schedule for release is Tuesdays uh, in the morning, 10 a.m. So if you want to join the conversation, you can listen to it every Tuesday. And again, follow us on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or everywhere else. And as we always see sa channel, don't ever stop learning. Aja, aja, kaya See you in the next video and bye for now.